once again, welcome. Thanks for tuning in to uh, Captain's Roundtable on Real to Real Outdoors. Uh, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the reminder bell. Uh, we'd love to have you see all of our videos. So we got a great group of captains tonight. So let's meet those guys and get this show started. I'm Captain Bobby Sullivan, Icebreaker Fishing Charters out of Ludington, Michigan. Hi, I'm Captain Ryan Bullard with Fishing Affairs, Sport Fishing Charters out of Ludington, Michigan. All right. So today's Captain's Roundtable, we're going to talk about uh, kind of an introduction to salmon fishing in the river. Um, I think people have kind of gotten away from it a little bit. And, uh, but, you know, the now that you can't snag anymore and those sort of things. So um, I, there's a lot of opportunity there. And I, and I hope Absolutely. that people will uh, maybe try get out there and, try and give it a little shot this year. Um, you know, the big thing is, though, if you're going to get out on the river, especially... You know, try and stay on the pass. Try to, you know, keep trash to a minimum. Yeah, pick up, pick up whatever you stuff. take out there with you. Bring, bring as much back, if not more, than what you brought. So, just kind of a nice thing. You know, you're out in pretty untouched areas a lot of times, and, and just keep that stuff clean. But let's. Uh, these guys are uh, both uh, guiding in the rivers for kings. Uh, if you're looking for a river trip. They may have an opening. I don't know. Sometimes nah. it's pretty hard to find well, something, but, uh, you know, give them a call, check them out, check out their websites and that sort of thing. Maybe not for this year, but, you know, think about it, uh, for next year as well. And always plan ahead. A lot of these, it's a pretty short little season. So, you know, book, book early is always a good option. Um, so who wants to kind of kick this off? Maybe, uh, Ryan, you want to sure, sure. show us the go ahead and start. kind of basic techniques? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's a couple different techniques we like to do in the river. Uh, usually when the season first gets going, the water's really warm. Um, and we do, uh, you know, we cast a lot of crankbaits, uh, a lot of deep junior thunder sticks, a lot of, you know, standard thunder sticks. Um, these guys will talk about all kinds of different colors over there. They got a full arrangement of what the fish really like. Uh, but as a rule, when the water's warm, um, you know, we like to throw a lot of thunder sticks. Fire tiger's usually always a really good go-to. Yeah. Um, you know, if usually if you can't catch them on that, they're usually, you know, not biting as we would like to say, but, um, and as far as angler skill, you know, we're going to talk about float fish and, you know, skein and beads and whatever too. So, uh, you know, that, that there's an art to that. So a lot of people, you know, anybody can, almost anybody can pick up a spinning reel, you know, yeah. throw a stick bait out there and reel it in. So, uh, you know, for the, a lot of the novices out there that we get on the boat and stuff, you know, I like crank, you know, let them throw cranks and. I mean, as these guys can testify, there's really nothing like a good crank bite. No. I mean, they really, they really whale it. It's like having a diver in your hand, yeah. you know, in the yeah. river. I've, I've had a couple of rods get dropped in my boat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hit. yeah. Uh, so, you know, we like, we like to do a lot of that. And, and for, uh, for that, I like to run an eight and a half foot Akuma medium heavy rod uh, with a spinning rod, with a spinning reel with a 30 pound uh, suffix 832 braid. Um, Gore-Tex braid. I don't run the high visibility braid on my crank rods, uh, but on my float rods, I do run the high visibility braid here, the 832. Uh, it's a small diameter. It floats really well and it holds up really well uh, in the river. Uh, so on my float rods, I like to run 50 pound braid and then I'll run some suffix um, full 100% fluorocarbon, uh, usually 20 to 25 pound liter um, on, there, on there. We'll run a, uh, you know, like a 30 inch chunk of that. Uh, from a barrel swivel um, off of off of the braid. So, and obviously your floats above that. We like to run, I run anywhere from a 15 to 20 gram Raven float. Uh, it depends on how big, uh, you know, chunk of skein I'm using. Uh, you know, if I'm fishing the big man of ste or, you know, somewhere where we're trying to really get down there and I'm running a heavier weight, um, you know, then I'll definitely step it up to the 20 gram float. But as a rule, you know, a three eighths to a half ounce weight is usually pretty good. And you can float that with a 15 gram float. Um, so when it comes to steelhead season too, uh, I like to run this uh, suffix advance, the new advance uh, clear line on my uh, crank rods. A lot of times, you know, they up in like the big man, they'll they'll uh, they will like back troll for say plugging. On mm -hmm. uh, the PM, we don't really have that option. We're more of a throwing stick river because it's real tight. Uh, so I so I like to run that there. Um, not to get off subject, um, my the king's setup. I like to cure my eggs with Potchkey's, uh fire cure. Um, I run mainly pink and red, rose red. Um, that's cure. yeah, fire cure, boraxo fire. Uh, you can mix the both of them up. Um, 
people always ask me, we get this quite a bit on the boat too, on the, on the lake boat. Cause people want to, you know, they want to try it themselves. And that's part of the reason we're having this segment here is so people can understand, you know, how to cure eggs, how to set up for that. The main thing to remember is if you want to get a good cured egg, you need to start with a good egg. Uh, you need to bleed your fish out. Uh, to get a good egg, you need a good blood-free egg. Uh, and don't overdo it with the cure. Uh, that's a lot of people, you know, they, they, they make that mistake of thinking that they need to really put that fire brine or that fire cure on there heavy. And as Bobby knows, you know, you really don't need to do that. It's just a light sprinkle. Follow the directions it says right on there. Go sparingly until you get familiar with it. Um, and then just follow the directions, basically. Uh, and a good trick that I can tell you guys is when the skein bite is dead and they're heavily pressured fish, like where Bobby and I fish on Saturdays and Sundays, there's a lot of boats. So they see all kinds of skein going down the river. Don't be afraid to pick up some beads and throw some beads. Uh, these are some I picked up off the shelf here at Captain Chuck's. Um, it's a good color. I prefer the 14s and 16 millimeter beads uh, when fishing king. So uh, if the skein bite dies on you, don't be afraid to, to pick up a rod and tie some beads on uh, and give that a try. Uh, the one other thing I could that I could mention about river fishing is, um, you know, don't be, it, it, you got to like to tie knots oh, yeah. because you're going to go through some tackle. And ultimately, that's what makes you a better river fisherman in the end, because you'll go down the river and you'll see where Bobby's sitting. You'll see where I'm sitting. And you're like, OK, you know, you want to race to those spots the next day. Well, where Bobby and I, we're we're bouncing around. We're trying new spots daily. Uh, you know, if it looks good, don't be afraid to throw in there. You know, if you throw in there once and you break off, that's how you learn a new spot. You know, there's logs in there. You throw in there, you know, you never seen a boat there. You throw in there, you might hit a few fish. So, you know, don't be afraid to throw in there. Bring lots of hooks with you. And, uh, uh, you know, I like to pre-snell some leaders. Uh, you know, I'll wrap them on a pool noodle. Uh, you know, I'll snell up my hooks, wrap them on a pool noodle. Same with my beads. Um when I'm fishing, I like to be fishing. I don't want to spend time retying. You know, you snap off a double bead rig. Um, you know, those take quite a bit of time to tie. A couple snells, a couple hooks, a couple beads, you're pegging, so on and so forth. Go sit down at the table at night, have yourself a bush apple ale. Go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and tie yourself up some rigs, wrap them on a pool noodle, throw them in your backpack. It'll make your day a lot more enjoyable on the river because then when you break off, you just untie one. Unpull, pull it off the noodle, tie it on, and away you go. So, yep. Yeah, you can take her from there, Bobby. Good stuff. So, <clears throat> I fish a little bit heavier than Ryan does. I'm running a 65 pound braid for my main line. It does two things it helps you mend the line a little bit better with that thicker braid. And also, I'm not losing bobbers with it. I think all year last That's year, great. I lost one, and it was because somebody cast up in the tree. I think they were fishing for squirrels. And, uh, <laughs> well, it is squirrel season when we're out there, you know. But it, it really helps mend the line. These kings aren't really line shy where we fish. The water's dirty down there. Um, I, I like running this three-quarter ounce with the slip bobber. I run a slip bobber so I can uh, move it up and down. Also, when you cast... You only have about a 24 to 30 inch leader. So it uh, really helps people get up into tight brush. I fish a lot, a lot of stuff that's really tight and hard to get into. And when you have this compared to a fixed float, you can flip it right up into those branches and bushes and get right down to the fish. And I like running that three quarter ounce weight because it gets it down below log jams. I, as Ryan knows, I fish some stuff that's not much bigger than this table. And, yeah. you know, I'm running 20, 30 pound leader and I very rarely break off on snags for the most part, I'm bending out hooks. So I'm cutting the line, retying new snow rig. Uh, that's just what I do on the skein rods. But every morning we start out throwing crankbaits, as Ryan said, or if I'm on the oars, um, normally I have one guy throwing a crankbait, one guy throwing a spinner. Uh, and the beautiful thing about these Kings is, you don't have to fish the main runs for them. They're moving up river yeah. every day, right at prime time. So any piece of dark water, there's going to be a king setting there, or there could possibly be a king setting there. So a lot of mornings, I if the river's not busy, I like just rowing down river and having everyone just cast behind every branch, piece of deep water, and they're going to whack a plug. Um, then once that sun gets up and those fish kind of stop pushing for the morning or 
slow down, start settling down in the holes, that's when I'll switch over to skein and start throwing that. And the skein fishing's been really good for me the last 10 years. And with the different cures, my favorite cure is the Potskis, the Braxo Fire Red. I do a lot of my cures in red. I think you get more fishability out of it because you get three, four casts with red. Sounds then awesome. it turns pink for three or four casts. Then it turns white. So you get more fishability out of a red egg, I believe. But I'll have seven, eight different cures in my boat. I'll have both fire cure and pink and red. I'll still have pink. Uh, Braxel fire and pink and red. I have the liquid cures, the Atlas and the fire cure. So I, I have a cooler that's dedicated to just uh. eggs in my boat. But if I had to buy one cure, it would be this right here. The Braxel fire red catches fish all year, especially at the end of the year. So the difference between the two, the fire cure is a sulfate cure. And this is just a borax cure. And these Kings, the main reason they're biting, I believe, is they're mad. You're yeah. trying to make these fish mad. So if you look at the plug colors, fire tiger, bloody nose, clown, something bright and gaudy that's going to get that fish to bite. And that's why I grabbed a couple of these spinners, bright spinners. Uh, yeah, like that spinner, Vibrex. Um, uh, but same thing with egg cures. That's why you're running red and pink. It's getting in their face. The sulfate makes them mad. They're going to bite it. The borax cure, I find this works better later in the year once it gets to the 1st yeah. of October. Yeah. They like a little bit sweeter cure. They don't like the the mm -hmm. salts and the sulfates. So, mm -hmm. um, so. The red definitely does hold its color because you, it's about impossible to get it off your hand. Yeah, yeah. and if you <laughs> look at pictures of me, I'm just red. <laughs> I wasn't going to break it up, yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty new to the, the skein thing um, and, and the cured can you just kind of go through like you're using very large hooks for this yeah uh you got to check your regulations on your river to sure, make sure, sure. you're oh, within yeah, yeah. the yep. hook requirement uh, a lot of times i'll use a one or a one out depending on where i'm at depending on the manufacturer uh, i think this one's a two odd on here right now but so, you're tying a egg loop on there so if you push the line up you're using eggs that are still in the membrane so you're cutting off a piece like how big is this piece uh honestly I, every day is different every day is different i mean you can use them from the size of a ping pong ball uh all the way down to the size of a nickel depending on the day sure. but i start out with a big chunk i i try to make the fish mad yeah. and so yeah. i'm using big chunks of eggs for the most part unless they're really pressured mm -hmm. and these aren't tied in the spawn bag this nope. is just cut right off just a, cut, cut right off of a chunk yep and maybe maybe we can do a video one day of us curing eggs. Yeah, sure, I yeah, think yeah. that'd be a, that'd be we'll a good one. To do. What, I, sure. what I like to do when I get my fish after we're done on our morning charter or whatever on the big lake, I'll take the skeins and I'll break them open with my hand. I'll basically right down the middle, so I'll open that skein instead of being like, uh, skeins are kind of shaped like, like a taco. That, like a taco. Yep. Then if I break them open, I'll flatten them out, and I'll put them in a... Uh, tub and i'll sprinkle the cure on it so it covers the whole eggs and i'll take gloves and make sure it rubs into all the membrane so mm -hmm. yeah we'll have to do a video on that and yeah, then what sure. so you're just uh can you freeze that after you cure it or do you just refrigerate it so the uh, the borax cure from what i find you can keep that in the refrigerator for about a month a month two months like if, your main, if it's blood main refrigerator yeah. in your yeah. house yeah my, my beer refrigerator <laughs> yeah. uh <laughs> but you can keep those if you do freeze them i like to use a mason jar uh, a half gallon mason jar i fill it up as full as i can get it make sure there's not a lot of juices in the eggs sure. you know i i dry makes, them out on a paper towel that makes the egg soft yeah and what i do is i put a piece of aluminum foil on top and i light a match put it on top of the aluminum foil then close the lid and that takes all the oxygen out of the out of the eggs mm. and i'm not worried about the smell mm -hmm. of the smoke they work yeah they, they'll last for about a year in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But I always try to fish fresh eggs. Sure, I, sure. I, I have frozen eggs just in case fishing's not good on the big lake and I don't have eggs. So, yeah. Yep. Last year, that was, uh, they were hard to come by yep. in the early season. Yep. A lot of males were getting caught. And, you know, a lot of people don't believe these fish bite when they come in the river, but they're biting. Oh, yeah. Well, we're catching them in the mouth. So, 
And it's uh, there's nothing. But quite they're like biting it. too. It's oh, not. Absolutely. You yeah. know, there's there's other ways to to catch <laughs> yeah. salmon that happens farther up the river, and I'm not afraid to talk about that. Sure, sure. Yeah, they are absolutely. not biting. They are not These biting. These fish are biting there. aggressively. Biting. Yes. Yeah. And for the bobber bite, I'll say this for anyone that's starting skein fishing, yeah. they will bite it and they'll take it down, and it'll look like a bluegill bite going down the yeah. river. Don't set the hook until that bobber goes all the way down. Right, yeah, because you'll just be missing fish. They like yeah. must mouth yeah. the bait back, and once that bobber goes down, set it with all your might. And, the and there's a, on. when those fish are traveling. Um, in my experience with this skein stuff, you don't have to be that deep. No, you can be in a in an eight foot deep run and only be down three feet. And I be very getting, rarely fish deeper than my foot. It's yeah. it's you know I know with steelhead. You're always trying to attack the bottom, bottom. Yes. Yep. and if you're not breaking off, you're you're not you know if you're not getting in the wood and you're not getting into the into stuff yep. with salmon, it's it's definitely easier mm-hmm. than Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So yeah, you don't need to find bottom, and a lot of times, halfway down to bottom is about yeah. the best. Yeah. And if I if I have a client miss a fish a couple times, one of my best tricks is I'll shallow up six eight inches, drift it through there, and they'll normally come up and yeah. whack it on that next cast like yeah. fully take it so that that's a really good trick if you keep missing fish shallow it up a little bit and go through there and mm-hmm. i'd say eight times out of ten they're gonna bite it they're gonna get it too so if if you've never experienced especially the early the early season uh, you know i think yeah. people the, the fish kind of move into the river and everybody kind of gives up on salmon it, it's really fun i mean it's like bass fishing for something that tries to tear you out of the boat and it, it, until you've experienced a crankbait um, strike from a king salmon, you 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 have no idea. But the yeah. first time you do, you'll be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's that's awesome." Yeah. And, and then the skein thing as well. It's it's a fairly easy way for inexperienced people um, to get out there and and uh, be successful. Mm-hmm. It's kind of immediate success a lot of times. Yeah. And, um, you know, learning a river and knowing a river and those sort of things are definitely uh, important factors. But the, the skein is, is a pretty good way to kind of get, get your, your feet wet, if you, if you yeah. will. And, and as I was getting at earlier, you don't need to know all the spots to catch these salmon in the river. It's not as hard as steelhead fishing is. If there's a piece of dark water, those fish are going to be moving up during the day and they're going to want to go through the deepest run yeah and if you fish it long enough you're going to put your bait in front of the fish that's Make coming mad up there. Enough. Yep. it's like when you're poking your little sister yep and pretty soon <laughs> she socks you she's had enough i mean yeah. it's about the same thing yeah but uh if you've never tried it well first off if you've never tried a type of fishing i, I am a huge uh I, I i'm a believer in in taking a guide guided trip um all of these guys are happy to take time to show you what they're doing and explain the knots and explain everything to you. If you don't want to know that, they're happy to tie those for you as well. Um, but you know, you can learn a lot. You can learn years of experience in one trip. Um, and it really does kind of get you a foundation to start from. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely look these guys up, try and, you know, and if they, if they're not available, I'm sure that they have guys that they'll recommend to you and, and word of mouth is really kind of the best, uh, technique to find a good guide. Um, but get out there and try it. I mean, you know, thunder sticks, you're, you're basically the only thing you really need to be cons- keep in consideration is, is you need a pretty heavy rod yeah and it needs to have a lot of backbone you have to be able to turn these fish especially in small water um you know you're fishing 30 pound braid if you do that on a steelhead rod you're not going to have a steelhead rod yeah uh it will break the rods so make sure that what you're doing is the right you know having a longer rod is definitely always easier in the river being able to uh, mend your line and that that sort of thing but make sure that you have enough backbone you're not going to go out and break a bunch of stuff yeah that's another reason i run the high vis line you want to you brought up mending yeah. uh, especially with clients in the boat yeah. uh, it's really crucial to keep a straight line as straight a line as possible to your float uh, from the tip of your rod so i like the high vis line uh, when my clients you know i can see they get it, the current will catch the line it'll get a big loop in it uh, bobber goes under they set the hook there's nothing there but slack line so when you run the high vis braid you know, you're able to mend and see your line, uh, you know, mend on the water and braid run mends real easy. So, you know, I think that's a, a good player 
Uh, and again, like Bobby said, the water we fish is pretty dirty. I don't think that the high vis braid, you know, under the water a couple feet makes any bit of difference at all when we're king fishing. Um, steelhead fishing, that's completely opposite. Um, so yeah, but yeah, it's man versus beast out there. I mean, obviously, I mean, you got almost a 50 pounder this year. I can't imagine hooking that fish in the river. The uh, chances of landing him, I would guess are probably zero, no. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> but I'm up for the challenge. So yeah. And we run heavy stuff. And we heavy run heavy stuff. A lot oh, yeah. Of people do. Yeah. yeah. I broke two rods last year myself. Yeah, so broke, we broke three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Just yeah. from fishing yeah. tight spots, trying yep. to get them out of it. Yeah. Trying to get put fish in the boat for clients on those tough days. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like I said, like uh, like you guys touched on the dark water, don't be afraid to try some new spots, uh, you know, and just get out there and go fishing. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for uh, sharing your, your knowledge on this. And, and I hope that, uh, you're, you're sitting back there watching this and thinking, you know what? I should get out there and give this a shot. Cause it, the first time you hook one, it, it's incredible. Yeah. And, it, and especially in a small piece, I mean, they hit a low wire and they pull off, you know, 200 feet without stopping. They do the same thing in the river. Yes, absolutely. But there isn't 200 feet before there's a tree or, yeah. you know, something. So it's, it is really exciting. Get out there and, and, Give it a shot. If you if you have any questions about river fishing, you know, Captain Chuck's, uh, there's lots of guys here that are happy to help you and get you set up with the right stuff. Um, these guys as well, you know, most of, most of all of the guides are, are happy to, um, you know, take a little bit of time, probably not a lot, but a little bit of time and, and give you a couple pointers. Or if you have a question, you know, feel free to send those to me and I will, uh, do my best to get get an answer for you. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks to Bushlight Apple, which I have to say, it's not bad. That's pretty it good stuff. It's pretty good That's stuff. That's pretty good I, stuff. Yeah, not bad. I think it's great. That's I'm a good believer. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Here's Captain that. Chuck's as always for making this happen. Uh, I hope you get out there and enjoy the river a little bit uh, this fall and uh, get out there, hook into one of those big kings, and and feel what we're talking about. <laughs>